This is the 217 Recovery Podcast with Corey Winfield. You have a rich person's name. Like, you should be a billionaire with the name Winfield. And co-host Marnie Winfield. Checking the microphone. It's going good. It is the 5th of October. Here's 2021. My name is Corey Winfield. My name is Marnie Winfield. Marnie, you're in the studio. I am. This is the 217 Recovery Podcast. Nico is also in the studio, the recovery kitty. She's a big fan of recovery. She hated when I would drink. Hated it. Stared at me. Wanted me to die. I could I could just feel it from her. And now she's just a sweet baby girl who likes to hang out, mm-hmm. listen to the recovery podcast. It's, it's her favorite thing to do now. Yep. So that's what's going on with us. Actually, there's a lot going on with us. There's so much news, Marnie. I don't even know where to start. Start from the top. Okay. Top of the list. Under news. Big thanks to Sam's Club of Traverse City, Michigan. Well, a few weeks ago or months, I don't remember how long ago it was, but we thought that Walmart had donated to us. And technically, Sam's Club, Walmart, same company. Mm-hmm. But... It was actually the Sam's Club of Traverse City, and I have to reach out to them still, but I'm getting over the COVID. I just still, I don't feel 100%, but today I got back at the at the desk here in the, in the office and sent some emails, but I got to get a hold of them um, and thank them personally for their support. We do really appreciate that, so big, big props to Sam's Club. Costco does not donate to us, though. Right. So just if you want to pick out which one you want to go to, there you go. Um, speaking of donating to us, we were supposed to have an auction last month, but the whole crew came down with COVID. <laughs> and I'm a last minute kind of guy anyway, so it's not like I had it all ready to go in August. So, it, yeah, didn't happen. But we are going to have an auction coming up very soon. And the Chicago Cubs not the Detroit Tigers who are in Michigan, but the Chicago Cubs donated to us, and they have an autographed picture that they sent us of a player named Ian Happ. So he's one of their, their good guys, and I thought that was special. You know, here are the, the Detroit Tigers in Michigan. They're like, no, we can't send you an autographed picture of anybody. I don't know, maybe because their whole team sucks. I don't know. Like, it, it wouldn't be that big a deal. But the Cubs, they were like, yeah, we want to help you guys out because we believe in that. You know, we support recovery. I was like, thanks, Cubs. That's why you rock. Mm-hmm. So um, we're going to auction that off very soon. So if you're a Cub fan, no Cub fan, it will look cool in your man cave or at your office, wherever you want. But we're going to get a nice frame for it. And we'll hook it up right. It'll look sweet. So that's coming soon. And also, we're going to have some 217 stuff to auction off as well. And I'd say the big news of the day, not bragging here, but uh, kind of am a little. It's big news. Uh, Arco. And people are like, what is Arco? It's Arco. I'll tell you. It's the Association of Recovery Community Organizations. The big deal thing. Mm -hmm. and they are out of Washington, D.C., and it's like the bigwigs of people in recovery. And before COVID, I think it was early August, actually, is when I sent um, an email, and we had to do, like, this questionnaire, and, you know, I filled out all this stuff. This is what we do, and this is who we support, who's here we team with, you know, and all all that jazz. And I sent that away, and then they said, okay, well, we're going to be reviewing that beginning of September. I was like, oh, okay. Well, beginning of September, I got an email, which I didn't see till today, and it's like, hey, um, our board and everybody, we're, we're voting. We're looking at you guys. So just wanted to keep you in the loop. Which again, Teasing you. Yeah, I didn't. No, just saying, hey, look, we didn't forget about you. you know, we're checking you guys out now. Mm-hmm. So... I said I didn't see that till today, but that was really September. And then, um, 
mid-September, a little past mid-September, I got the email, which I got today. <laughs> so congratulations. We voted. The board voted, and we dig you guys. We want you to be a part of Faces and Voices of Recovery. And then about a week later, they send another email saying, hey, uh, usually people are pretty excited. They didn't say that, but that's pretty much what I was saying. Like, you guys just going to diss us now? Mm-hmm. And it's another one. They're like, all right, well, you got 15 days to respond, you know, kind of thing. And I looked at it today and was like, oh, yeah, yeah. So then I told them that, you know, I had COVID and I wasn't ignoring them, but I just been out, you know, I was out of commission. But, uh, but yeah. We're an ARCO member now. Mm-hmm. We're a part of the Association of Recovery Community Organizations. Yeah, so we're and, recognized as that. Yeah, and that's kind of a big deal, too, because a lot of grants. And first I was like, why we have to be a part of this to get a grant? But some of the grants going around in Michigan, and I was told it's because, mm, I'll make it sound better than what I was told, because people are too busy to look into it themselves so they figure, hey, if they're a part of ARCO and Faces and Voices of Recovery, they've been looked into, they're legit, we can give them the grant. Uh-huh. Instead of them going through and looking at, at themselves and going, yeah, these guys are, are legit. Now, there was a grant that we were going to apply for, but we just didn't have time. And it was from the federal government. And they were like, yeah, you guys are a recovery community organization. Like, you don't need to be part of them. You guys are. We look at your website, and we can tell you that, yeah, you guys are doing what you're supposed to. So, But, yeah, for the grants that go out in Michigan, you know, that's, that's going to help us with those. Um, so that that's kind of a big deal, you know, and it just kind of gives us a little clout. And, you know, people check us out, and we're part now. So that's pretty cool. Thanks. Yeah, that's, that's super cool. Yeah. Toot my own horn. <laughs> but, no, nah, I mean, we support. We thank everybody that supports us too. I mean, it means so much to us. It really, really does. And you know what Marnie and I do is sincere. You know, the things we say, it's sincere. We're not putting on an act. We're not doing it for somebody else. This is something that we both, well, I made Marnie do it, (laughs) (laughs) but it helped me stay sober and it still helps me stay sober. And I just want to help other people stay sober. I took a guy to treatment the other day. Yesterday, matter of fact, and it was the first trip I've done since August, I think, and or maybe early September. But anyway, he was just kind of like, yeah, I smoked some weed this morning. And I'm like, dude, like, I'm just going to let you know, man, like, I know weed's legal in Michigan. And some people are like, no, man, I smoke weed. That's fine. That do you, you know, for me, shit didn't work because I smoke weed and I don't like it. That's not my thing. I don't skydive either. You know, <laughs> why would I smoke weed? I don't like it. Uh, you know, when I was a teenager, sure. But once the alcohol took over, the alcohol is what I wanted. So if I'm trying to tease myself with some weed, nah, nope. Next day I'm going out and getting a half. That's what happened. I went, I got a half a pint. I thought, oh, I'll smoke a bowl and then just drink the half a pint. And then... I don't know, two days after that, I'm like, hey, man, you want the rest of this weed? I'll trade you if you buy me a fifth. Right. And it was just boom, off and running again, you know, and I'm not, I can't stop it. So I told him, I was like, bro, like, and his thing really wasn't weed. It was um, meth and heroin. And he's like, yeah, but I can smoke weed and it's free. And this. I'm like, yeah, but it's not free because you're going to go right back and doing the thing, man. I'm telling you. And. I just told them, like, look, if you really want to be done with going to rehab over and over and over, you have to be accepting of, I don't smoke weed no more. I don't drink no more. I don't do meth anymore. I don't do heroin. I don't do any of that. Not anymore. I told them, I was like, just try try it for a year. I was like, I guarantee you in a year, you're going to be like, why would I smoke that joint? Mm -hmm. I don't even want it. You know, but sometimes we get caught up in our problems, and that's what I told them, too. It's like, when you're going to rehab, Figure out these solutions to your problems, you know, get a therapist, you know, work yourself through it. I was sitting here at the apartment by myself for a week. You're in the hospital. I could have drank. Yeah. It popped in my mind, man, you know, cause it's that 
oh, I got the place to myself for a week, and man, I don't, I could do whatever, you know. No, I don't drink. Why would I do that? It's not going to make me better. I have COVID. I'm sick as hell. Why would I? Why? Why would they even pop in my head? Because I'm an addict. Yeah. And that's the way I used to live. But no, I didn't. You know, I slept for three days straight, which freaked you guys out. But you know, I didn't drink. But it did cross my mind, and I told you that. I was like, yeah, it, it popped in my head. But it's got to shut that shit down and realize, no, 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 no. It's not what I do anymore. And why? It's going to make me miserable. I'm not going to be able to stop. I'm going to let everybody, I'm going to let myself down. You know, how am I going to do a podcast? Right. You know, I don't know. And the podcast to me and 217 Recovery to me is way more important than getting a, a buzz for a minute. And then when you go to drink that and it's been so long, you realize it's not even that good. Like the last, one of the last times I drank, it was like, this isn't even that good. You know, it was more of the rush going in to buy it and to hear that receipt printing out. And then I was like, oh, yeah, yeah. Get home, I take a drink, and I'm like, huh? take a big old swig of it. It's like 100 proof. No, nah, nothing. And it was just off and running again, more destruction. So, a little advice. <laughs> but I did tease the other day, too, that we were going to talk about are oh shit moments. And what I mean by that is that moment, because we had a meeting on Zoom the other day through our app, and we started talking about that. We started talking about movies and how they'll say smoking and bad language and nudity, but it won't say drinking. But I did see one the other day that said drinking. Really? I was like, oh, I was like, yeah. I was like, here we go, finally. Hmm. You know, but they're throwing all this other stuff up there and – but never drinking. But yeah, I saw one the first time the other day. But anyway, we were talking about that and then triggers and then just that, that oh shit moment where you realized I got problem. And one of the guys was saying that he heard people talk about having the shakes, you know, and the withdrawals. And he's thought, man, I, that's not going to be me until it happened to him. And I was like, dude, yeah, that was my oh shit moment. Like, I remember I was living in Fort Smith, Arkansas, and I was doing a remote in Fayetteville for the other station that I worked for. And I was driving up there, and it was this Harley Davidson place I was going to. And I didn't drink on the job. I didn't drink at remotes. People would offer me beers, but I wouldn't. I probably would have felt a lot better if I did. But I was shaking so bad. And we had iPads, and that's how we would we'd punch in our numbers, and it would send it back to the station and we'd put the cart number in the computer so like when we record something into it blue and when it comes down the list it plays boom that's our that's our broadcast i had such a hard time hitting those numbers i was shaking so bad and the client is sitting there looking at me and i i felt like that was a huge oh shit moment for me like mm -hmm. and i tried to play it off i always try to play it out oh, i didn't i didn't take my medication today i'm on blood pressure medication man people know and yep. when the, those shakes started coming on, though, that's that's when I realized, oh, shit. But I didn't know what to do. I didn't know there was help out there. I thought if I came to my boss and said, hey, I need to go to rehab, write some help, they would fire me. Mm -hmm. uh, I, for iHeartMedia, that is that was not the case. They were very, very supportive. They said, take what you need. Here's some FMLA papers. You have three months of sick time. <laughs> you have three weeks of vacation. I didn't miss a paycheck, you know, so it was great. And they, they were really wonderful. And I, but I didn't know that. I just thought if I come clean with this problem, I'm going to get fired. People are going to know, you know, they're not going to want somebody on the radio who's a drunk, an alcoholic. Mm -hmm. So I, I didn't know what to do. And I got my mom going, you got a problem. You should blah, blah, blah. And I didn't want to hear none of that either. You know, so it was very, very difficult for me. And the only thing I knew how to stop the shakes was to drink more, yeah. which just made it worse until my liver stopped and my kidneys shut down. Then it was, can't really hide that. So, yeah. but yeah, the, oh, that was kind of my oh shit moments though. It was like early in the radio and not being able to function, you know, past one o'clock. That's when the shakes would just mm -hmm. come on crazy. What about you? Mm. Well, so my real heavy drinking 
was started and was in college. Oh. Happens to a lot of people. Yeah. So, um, but that was normal, right? You could pass that off as just like college partying. Mm -hmm. And I mean, it got more and more, you know, like to the point where it was like, first it was just weekends, you know, then it was like the bar nights, the special nights or whatever. Thursdays. Then it was Mondays at whatever. And Tuesdays. Yeah. Michigan State, man, every night is party night. Doesn't matter. You can find a, find a, you know, a bar to go to that's. You know, everybody's there and it's normal just, you know, to be there and we during the week. So, um, and then I remember the joking about day drinking and um, hair of the dog, right? You know about that? Yeah. So it's supposed to be like, uh, you know, these people who normally don't drink probably and are, if you're hungover to have another drink and then it'll get rid of it, and then you can go about your day, yeah. right? You get you kind of taper, you're tapering yourself down from your hangover mm-hmm. or whatever. Oh no, when that started rolling in to a whole another entire day of drinking, it just didn't stop. It didn't stop. So I'm using the I'm using the hair of the dog as as an excuse, as like a jokingly because that's socially acceptable to say you know you're having a morning drink to get rid of your hangover from the night before. Mm-hmm. Oh no, yeah. I never got hungover. Yeah. I was just carrying out my my drunk, and that's when it was like, oh shit, because and I'd be all by myself. Who does who jokes about hair of the dog when you're all by yourself, you know, in your apartment, and you're cracking open a Mike's Hard Lemonade at nine o'clock in the morning because you don't want to feel like crap, and then you just keep drinking those throughout the day, and as long as you know I didn't have anything super important to go to where people might smell me, um. And that's when I was like, this is not right. It's not normal. So I think it was like the summer of my mm, junior year because I was taking summer classes and I was working at a bar. So essentially I could get away with the fact that it nobody was going to really hammer down on me for being like, she smells like booze. Right. You know, because you can go to class and smell like booze as long as you're not, you know, making a scene. So that's when it was really kind of apparent that this is, I have a problem. And then, you know, gosh, go on from there, fast forward, gets even scarier and more dangerous. But at that point it was, you know, acknowledgement of, of the fact that I was not normal. So you knew you had a problem or you were like, okay, I got a problem, but you was probably still in the, but I'm in college. Right. So that's fine. I, I'll, I'll grow out of it. But right now, I mean, it's a problem, but oh, it, I'll, I'll stop one day. Yeah, it definitely fell underneath the category of alcoholism. But it was almost like offset by the fact that I was a college student. So, yeah, I mean, they do overlay each other. But it was an exception because, you know, I wasn't, you know, living underneath a bridge and yeah. couldn't afford my Mike's Hard Lemonade. Yeah. You know, come on. Get cigarettes and yeah, whatever. Food. Yeah, yeah, it was good. So, but um, it's a progressive disease and it tricks you, mm-hmm. you know, and we want to normalize it all day long as much and as scary as the real thing is. We can talk about, we learn about it, you know, that it's a disease when you're in school and you learn about drugs and alcohol. You know about parents or your neighbors when you're a child and you're like, I'm never going to be like that. I'm never going to be like that. And then all of a sudden it just turns into this, this, we normalize it and we mm, justify it in these screwed up ways um, just to get through it, you know? And then we always have in the back of my head, especially when you're young, really young, is that it's just for now. It's a for now thing. And, you know, I don't have to grow up yet. I don't have those grown-up responsibilities yet. When I have those grown-up responsibilities, and I'm going to prioritize. But, hey, I mean, I was getting good grades in school. You know, it was, like, just enough to be a problem, and then it was so much to be a problem that sh- stuff just started falling apart faster than I could keep it, keep it together. So. Yeah, it's very progressive, and when it takes over your life and you don't even realize it, 
that's when it becomes very scary. But we're not scared because, well, I'm going to quit when I have kids. Mm-hmm. I'm going to quit when I get married. I didn't want to get married. I wasn't ready to have kids. <laughs> so, like, when was I ever really going to quit? Mm-hmm. And people walked out of my life, friends, girlfriends, family members, because they were just tired of it. Mm-hmm. Nope, I didn't care. F them. Got my drink. You know, and I, I didn't even realize it. Like this, it's so progressive, and then it just it takes over your brain. You know, as much money as our governor, or my mom's governor here in Michigan, spends on trying to, to ban vaping flavors, and the little billboard she'll throw up on the highway saying, don't drink and drive. There needs to be more education to what alcohol does to your brain, what it does to your body, and how it takes people over, not just a billboard. You know, maybe she'd take a half of that money she's spending on trying to ban vaping flavors, ban some alcohol flavors, whipped cream, maybe whipped cream vodka, strawberry mm-hmm. vodka. Do we really need that? It, it just it, it blows my mind. But see, the alcohol companies are paying them, mm-hmm. and the, I love how they do this too with cigarettes. They, they tax the hell out of it, right? And they're like, well, we need that because uh, that money goes to pay for people when they uh, go to the hospital. Blah, blah. No, it doesn't. Hmm. This sounds good, though. Oh, well, these people smoke. No, you get to the hospital and they're like, well, we're not going to give you a new lung because, well, you did this to yourself. Same thing with drinking. We're not going to give you a new liver. You did this to yourself. Mm-hmm. And the money helping me. You know, it does help people in rehab. Helps people that can't afford rehab to go to rehab. I think. Mm-hmm. I mean, there's over $300 million a year. I mean, I think we did the math on this already, but where's it going? Yeah. You can fund $400 for a, a facility that has 20 people for a year. Every single day had that bitch packed. Three million bucks. 2.9. Okay, we have 20 of those in Michigan. I don't even think we have 20. And Medicaid doesn't even pay $400 a day. Right. So, I mean, that that's that's shooting high. Okay. So... Let's just say three million times twenty, sixty million. There's still two hundred and forty million dollars out there. I know, isn't that ridiculous? Are you helping cancer patients? Mm-hmm. Not that I know of. They're not telling anybody about it. Mm-hmm. I, I doubt it. Are they helping people with mental health? Because a lot of people drink because of mental health health issues. You know, they're depressed. You know, they have problems. That's the same reason why people smoke. And they tax those people more. They it, they tax the liquor. It, it just doesn't make sense. I mean, some of the money's going in the right direction, but not even mm. nearly enough. Enough. Not when they're going around saying that they can't pay for two seventeen recovery to take somebody to treatment or get them home safe because they don't have enough money. Right. What? What? I'd like yeah. to talk to some PIHPs on that one. That's a whole other story. Yeah, don't even go there. But anyway, that's my little two cents there because something needs to change, really. I was talking to this lady. I went to Walgreens yesterday. Mm -hmm. And I had my 217 Recovery shirt on. And she's like, what's 217 Recovery podcast? And I told her, I was like, it's a podcast that I started when I got out of treatment three years ago. And we do a podcast talking about recovery. We help people. We take people to treatment. You know, and I just kind of told her about the stuff we do on our website and resources. And we just kind of let people know, hey, it's okay. You know, you're not a bad person because you had a problem. You can change that around. And she was like, oh, my God, my son. Because I told her, I was like, I went 15 times. And she's like, my son just got done with this first. Mm-hmm. I was like, well, you know, it takes time sometimes, you know. And just stick with them. Yeah, you know, but don't enable them. And she was just kind of she started tearing up a little bit, and she's like, "I'm gonna have him check out your." I'm like, "He might not. <laughs> he might not." I was like, "Well, my mom would tell me to check out stuff. I'd be like, no, yeah, I don't even need that. F those people." Yeah. So I just told her, but I was like, "Just be patient, though. You know, not everybody gets it on the first time." That's right. So that was that was kind of cool, and you know, people ask a lot when we go out. You know, what is that? You know, if they don't know about it and. And that's pretty cool to kind of help people that way too, you know. And and we do talk more to families of people who are addicts, I think, than actual people who are in active addiction. Mm-hmm. 
so that was kind of that was nice it felt felt good yeah that's why i don't drink anymore i <laughs> use drugs yeah i get that kind of feeling which is way better yeah uh last thing i want to talk about unless you want to talk about something else real quick oh, go ahead the walking dead i've been wanting to talk about this for so long yeah mm-hmm. it's the final season mm-hmm. uh it's it's all right you think it's a little slow i thought it was, i think it's a little slower than i'm used to than i than i like yeah but it'll it'll rev up mm-hmm. so on the show they have or have had people who are l b g t q b <laughs> you got it gay Mm-hmm. Let's say gay. It's easier that way. So they got them represented, right? So I'm like, yeah, we're good, yeah. And then they have deaf people now. Mm-hmm. So that's good. Hearing impaired. Yep, hearing impaired. You want to say that? But somewhere in this world, even in the Walking Dead world, there are little people running around. Like zombies. Where they at? That's what you're worried about. Yeah. The LPA, Little People of America, should stand up to Walking Dead and say, where's our people? Mm-hmm. I mean, they have a spinoff. Because where are they, man? I haven't seen one little person zombie. There's not very many what children zombies, though, either. Oh, there are, f- there are say, a few. Oh, I thought you were going to say there's not that many um Little people. There's no, 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 no. I'm seeing represented in the zombies of The Walking Dead that they're you're like right. every, everybody is like between like 35 and 50 mm-hmm. zombies walking around. Yeah, like so nobody's like nobody's like 12. Yeah, well, 12 year olds don't have a association like the little people of America. Oh, wow. So I, I would just follow them. I'd be like, what's up, man? How come we're not represented? Mm-hmm. But that would be a cool spinoff. I'd watch it. Like, what if, like, this community, just little people, because what, what's going on with them? Where'd they go? Maybe, did, did they find a, the island? Hmm. Was there, like, a chocolate factory somewhere that they were, like, hanging out in? Really? You're going to. What? <laughs> they could have hid in there. I'm saying what? <laughs> that was a Willy Wonka reference. I am very well aware of that. That was good. That was that was top of my head too. It just came out. Like that, <laughs> so, um, but yeah, I don't know. That just kind of bothers me a little bit, and I think about it a lot. But I just really wanted to bring it up on the show. You know, if they're going to represent people, they even represented alcoholics. Remember that one dude? Um, I can't remember his name, but he was on the top and. They were like running away. He's dead now, but they were running away and he had the bottle in his bag. Oh, right. Yeah. And they dropped something. He went to grab that and then Daryl looked at him and was like, are you kidding me? Yeah. So they're, they, you know, they have substance use disorder people represented. Mm-hmm. It's true. Hearing impaired. Mm-hmm. Gay community. There's little people. Mm-hmm. I'm just saying. You should write them. The Walking Dead are the little people of America. The Walking Dead. Yeah, because I'm kind of on the outs with the little people of America. Wow. So I tried getting on a dating site once, mm-hmm. and they would not let me on there because oh. I am not a little person. Well, okay. I can see where they're coming from. <laughs> well, I mean, I just thought it'd be cool. Check it out, you know. Farmersonly.com. You know, people go there. They aren't farmers. You know, I think I can sign up for Black People Mingle. I would think I, maybe I can't. I don't know. Mm-hmm. I mean, if you had white people only dot com, she yeah. <laughs> that wouldn't work out very well. It's true. <laughs> white men of America <laughs> dating dot com. She they shut us down a heartbeat. <laughs> they were like, oh, you white privilege. You can't have that dating site. Mm hmm. Anyway, that's what I got. I'm done. Yeah? You know, I had a good little show today, I think. That's good. At the 30-minute mark about, so. Yeah, I'm I'm struggling just with my health because of this herniated disc that I got. So I've been in a lot of pain and trying to 
sort out when I can get back to normalcy. I feel so bad for you. It's terrible. It's awful. Everything's uncomfortable, and I can't sleep for crap. And, you know, I'm trying to keep up with work, which is, it's okay, but it's still, still difficult. And just not being able to physically walk. It's just, ugh, man. So. I know, I feel bad. I've had better days. I try to help you as much as I can. I know you do. You're very sweet. Thanks. So. I'll just hang in there and I mean it, it will get better somehow whether yeah. you know you have to have a surgery I know that you're doing the physical therapy thing mm-hmm. they had me doing that I guess it helped I don't know it seemed like it was 20 years mm-hmm. but you know you did the right thing though by actually going there in an ambulance yeah and I think we had talked about that too because I was like you just if I just take you You'd be sitting in the lobby. Mm-hmm. Where are you in line? Mm, your back hurts. Mm, okay. Yeah. But, I mean, they didn't. And if anybody has herniated disc or ever had sciatica, man, it is brutal. Especially when you first get it. it it's just a, such a shock to your body. Like, you didn't even know you could hurt that way. Yeah. And it just doesn't go away. And it's just hell. And I, it, It's just unpredictable, too. That's mm-hmm. the thing that bothers me the most. It's like. You you have no idea when it's going to get set off. And, mm. I mean, you know the root problem. You know exactly where it is that is, you know, physically wrong. But you don't feel it in that place. It's like your my whole entire left leg is just useless. And it's just it, out of nowhere. It's cra- It's insane. So, but, you know, I'm not, I'm not drinking over it, you know. So, it's just got to get through it. Like all the other stuff, life throws you curveballs and you just gotta kind of handle it so i was where i was like every month or two sober for a month and that came on and that was the i had i it right to drinking you know they tried to give me some pills that didn't, that didn't work you know and i'm not a pill guy really anyway but alcohol i could pass out and actually sleep you know so i justified it for sure Mm-hmm. And obviously that's nothing you're going to do. You're not going to go out and drink to make the pain go away. You just got to ride through it, but it, it does suck. And I feel really bad for you and it'll get better eventually, you know, just hang in there and mm-hmm. I'll help you as much as I can. But yeah, thanks for coming in the studio today though. I know oh, it's probably yeah. not comfortable sitting in that comfortable chair. Oh, Cause it does. Nothing's comfortable. Nothing's comfortable. <laughs> so I mean, it's like, yeah, yeah, but Thank you. I appreciate it. Mm-hmm. Thanks for listening. Uh, changed around the website a little bit today, too. It looks amazing. So if you want to check that out, 217recovery.com, you'll see the the logo for Arco. Mm-hmm. And there's a link to them, too, if you want to find out more about them or, or what have you. But, yeah, T-shirts, we're still giving those away. If you sign up for one, you will win one. Just saying, 217recovery.com. Got some sweatshirts the fall line of 2021. I want to grab you one of those or two of those. Mm-hmm. They're nice. Look smooth. They're really comfortable. It's like the, the Puma brand, like that font style. Mm-hmm. They look is cool. What we're going for this fall and people do love them. So check it out. And I'm going to put some hats on there eventually as well, but the auction for the Cubs autograph picture that's coming up very soon. I don't know when I'm still not hundred percent from mm-hmm. COVID. So I'm just easing back into it. There's really no timeline on it at this point. But look for the auction soon. Uh, If you sign up on our app, we'll send out notifications on there if you get the app from the app stores. You can also sign up on our website and become a member of our website, and it'll put you into our email blasts. So when we get that stuff ready, we'll ship those out. And think, there's a few people that started following us on YouTube and our website. I don't have their names pulled up right now, but Thursday's coming up. That's when we do shout outs. Yep. So we do appreciate you guys uh, following us and, and supporting us. So thank you very, very much. And have a good night. Have a good day whenever you're listening. But we will talk to you on Thursday. Night, everybody. Thanks for listening to the 217 Recovery Podcast. For more episodes plus bonus features, download the 217 Recovery app and support recovery by rating us in the App Store.